Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook tutorial. Here we have Unit 5, Momentum. The section is 5.0, Conservation of Energy and Momentum. Here you could read the scenario to yourself. What's happening is car M1 is getting compressed, having spring potential energy, then released, and it's going to go towards and hit M2. So, argumentation, they want us to break down the claim and the evidence. After cart 1 is launched, how will the total mechanical energy of the system change if M1 is large? Read this question. Is there any friction? Friction, neglect. Oh, no. The system is conservative. Okay, that's easy. All right. So my answer is that the system is uh, conservative. That's how the equation would look like. It's all spring potential. And that's going to get all converted to the cart's kinetic because oh, kinetic was zero at the start. Potential is zero at the end. That's what it looks like once you plug in. in. So notice the total mechanical energy of the system does not change when M1 is large. What does change is the... Look at the calculation. The final velocity of cart one does change, right? Because after k not equals to zero, mu of gra of the spring. This is not. This is not supposed to be g. This should be s. Okay, that's supposed to be s or k. However you want to write it. Okay, it's going to the spring potential is going to be equal to all the kinetic. That's what the velocity would look like once you multiply by the 2, divide the m over, right? So my claim here is that the total mechanical energy of the system does not change if m is large. That's your evidence with your reasoning. After cart 1 is launched, how will the total momentum of the system change if m1 is large? They want the momentum, so we're going to have to end up using conservation of momentum. I would say that if m... My claim is that if M is large, the total momentum of M after it also will be large. Because the conservation of momentum of the system is conservative, that's how the momentum equation looks like. M1 times V0, that's the mass times velocity. At the end, the two masses are together with the new velocity. Even though the velocity of M1 is, um, is smaller right here, Look at how we said that the velocity of the cart will decrease when M increases. Although that velocity is smaller, the momentum is going to stay higher because the mass increases. So V went down, but M went up l a large amount. That's why. Next, based on both of your answers, explain whether M1 should be large or small, making the final speed, uh, the spine, th the final velocity very fast. Okay. All right. We should already see here, based on the momentum, that we want velocity to be larger. We want the mass to be larger so we could have more velocity. Sorry. We want the mass to be larger so we could have more velocity due to the conservation of momentum. M1 needs to be large to make the final speed V large. Increasing M1 doesn't affect the total mechanical energy of the system, but does increase the momentum of the cart system. The cart will have more momentum. Will have more momentum momentum before colliding into the second cart. Here, they want us to derive an equation uh, to prove this. And again, we are gonna. That's why I did some of the math here. Okay, I'm gonna use conservation of energy and conservation of momentum together for my deviation. All right, we'll start off with the conservation of energy. Initial energy equals to the final energy. The initial energy was just all the kinetic energy. That's the original is the springs potential is going to get converted to the kinetic energy of the cart. Solve for V. That's what it looks like. This is the velocity of the cart. Now we do conservation of momentum. That's how it looks like. It's M1 plus M2 because the carts are together. Solve for v i substitute in the v into v naught that's the velocity 
I divide m1 plus m2 to the other side to let to solve for the velocity afterwards. I also let m1 plus m2 equals to big M. That's the tonal mass. The reason why I do that, you're going to see. After that, I'm going to, you see the square root of a fraction. I split up the square root, square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. That square root of the bottom, the square root of m1, I'm going to do something called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. In math class, you might learn this, you might not. It's when you can't have a square root or a radical at the bottom of a fraction. Okay, you have to, there's videos or ask your teacher on how to rationalize the denominator. At this point, I rationalize the denominator. It, simp it, simpl it simplifies to this. I notice that the velocity is directly proportioned because it's on top of the fraction, directly proportioned to the square root of m1. So I can actually say in the end, now it says, which line supports my claim? Well, I'm just going to use the last one. So this supports my claim, All right? Supports my claim that the velocity is directly proportionally to the square root of m. So if m goes up, velocity is going to go up. That proves this point that if we increase the velocity, if we increase the mass, the velocity is going to increase, right? So it proves this claim m1 needs to be larger to make v larger okay that proves that all right so there you go that is 50